There's a certain subgenre of film drama that sits somewhere between the conventional scripted narrative and documentary, where scenes play out in almost real time and dialogue flows, stops, does a few twists and turns, as it tends to in real conversations between people. Not in the shorthand style that usually is movie dialogue. Now, here we have a young director starring in his own film, experimenting with layers of realism. Handheld cameras, a very loose approach to what feels like a lot of improvised dialogue. The question inevitably on everyone's mind, does it work or does it collapse under its own alternative cleverness? This is Three Blind Mice. Matthew Newton, with a solid list of acting creds under one arm and a script under the other, was clearly able to bring to this independently funded project a lot of favours from a veritable who's who cast of Australian actors. Scene after scene, you'll be saying to yourself, oh look, that's that guy from, and, and the one was, and, and wasn't that other fellow in that TV show about, and the girl, she's the old fella's other daughter, right? Yeah, right. Everyone is in it. The cast reads really as a who's who of Australian theatre and screen from the past 25 years. A bit on the town. Go on, Sammy. Go on, go on. At the beginning of the film, we meet three young seamen on the town for a spree without a single sighting of Gene Kelly. It's the classic setup of one last night of innocence and shenanigans before being shipped off to a war zone in the cold light of day. Newton himself plays high-spirited and repeatedly reckless Harry. Toby Schmitz as the contemplative and responsible Dean. And Ewan Leslie as the somewhat lost lamb Sam. In the confines of a rather bland hotel room in semi-whispers, Dean and Harry are treading on eggshells concerning something that's happened to Sam. And the teasing out of what it is and why it has happened is beautifully infused into the developing storyline. No giveaways, promise. But while the film is a character study first and foremost, the plot is there, gently bubbling away beneath the surface. What am I talking here for? It's probably your idea. Watch it. What? I mean it, Harry. Oh, what, you got a taste for it now, have you? The three leads play with absolute conviction. Newton proves he's not just a first-rate actor, but as a director, he's able to bring out the very, very best in those around him. Anything else? I, I couldn't leave without telling you that you absolutely devastated me the second I saw you. Stylistically, the whole experience feels very freeform, most of the time observational rather than staged. Now, some critics have drawn comparisons with the films of John Cassavetes for its use of naturalistic real-time conversation, and certainly this style isn't everyone's cup of tea. I mean, a five-minute exchange of dialogue between two characters takes five minutes to play out. And by TV soap opera standards with their 90-second scenes, this will feel as slow as molasses in January. But it has a function. The protracted time scale allows the actors to really inhabit their character and for us as an audience to absorb the nuances that otherwise would just simply slip right by unnoticed when a scene is being played in a contrived shorthand. In an interview, Newton mentioned the film was fundamentally scripted and only a few scenes were completely off the cuff, in particular where the leads interact with people passing by on the streets. And if that is the case, then he has mastered the art of blurring the lines between improvisation and structured dialogue with noted brilliance. Your hotel, where are you standing? The is stinking. Oh, really? What room number? It felt to me like half the film was improvised, and in those moments, it really stood out as something fresh and different to the mainstream. Um, three, one, four? That is so, I'm gonna be knocking on the wrong door. That said, there are some scenes that might have fared better with some heavy-handed pruning at the film editing stage. In particular, a card game featuring Newton Schmitz, Alex Dimitriadis, Marcus Graham and Clayton Watson. Does that mean that's all yeah. right? While the actors, I'm sure, were having a wonderful time reaching to the very core of their He-Man bravado, it goes on so long that it starts to feel like an acting improvisation class rather than helping to develop further either plot or character. Now, I'm not saying it has no function, but in terms of screen time compared to the payload it ultimately delivers, it feels rather disproportionate. 
In another sequence, Barry Otto and Heather Mitchell as Dean's prospective in-laws play out a painful, bickering, drunken aversion of all the reality about them. Again, fascinating character stuff, but ultimately, like the card game, is it helping to drive the plot and the impact for our main characters? Okay, well, she's a monarchist. Oh. Now, just settle down, Kath. It happens everywhere. It's a bit like the Jardine, you know, Janine. when she was harassing you at the pharmacy. Oh, well, it's nothing it's like, like that. that. On a, um, you know, a different scale. It's nothing on a like different that. Scale. <clears throat> so, filming is over. It's eight weeks later. Here we are in the editing room. And it's time to make the hard decisions, to look at what's in front of us objectively and ask the very important question repeatedly. Would the audience miss that moment or that if the scene was half the length? Would cutting it down that much actually make the scene more concentrated and more effective in communicating its intention? See, more isn't always more. Discuss. Uh, Gino, I think it's cab time for these two. <laughs> While there are those somewhat bloated legato scenes, there are also tighter, leaner and more focused moments that really demand our attention. Sam's visit to his mother and grandfather is a multi-layered glimpse, not just into Sam's background, but the expectations of Granddad Bud Tingwell in his last film appearance, and Jackie Weaver in a fascinating and multi-dimensional characterization. He's not very well. I He's not well enough. Well, we came to see you guys. Oh, I brought him up to have no manners. I'm Sam's mum. Hey, Miss Fisher. Bernie, Bernie. Not Bernie, Bernie, just Bernie. Sense of humour from his late father. Dad's not dead. Is that right? Her conflicting disappointment, fear, criticism and love for her son are barely fleeting hints of a very rich and detailed backstory. Close the door, Sam. See what he does to me, I haven't even got any face on. In an interview with Stuart O'Connor of The Guardian, Newton has said this of the film. I guess I also wanted to show what young men should be doing with their evenings as opposed to going and getting killed or having to kill someone else. Making mistakes, getting into trouble, meeting girls, playing cards, trying to figure out what it is to be a man. Newton really brings that home in a climactic scene between Harry and a character talked about but unseen to this point, Glenn Carter, played by Brendan Cowell. It's an uncomfortable and confronting showdown between the anti-hero and the villain, and it's expertly played by both. I think you heard me. Oh, Harry. <laughs> oh, Harry. <laughs> You've got no idea what the next six months of your life are going to be like. Do you realise? Simultaneously, it's a dressing down for Harry and a recognition of his growth, his change and acceptance of responsibility that to this point has kind of eluded him. The themes of loyalty, commitment, honesty and the abuse of power are all knocked squarely and firmly into their respective pockets, with a surprise twist in the final moments surrounding Sam and Harry's personal decisions. Now, th this is no gimmicky twist, not at all. It feels absolutely right, given what these characters have been through over the course of the evening. It's good to hear after several years of unfortunately very public exposure of personal troubles, Matt Newton seems to be back in action with a new film he's directed in the USA, From Nowhere. As of late 2016, it was doing the festival circuits and gaining really positive exposure. So best of luck with that, Matt. Speaking of festival circuits, Three Blind Mice screened at the Toronto International Film Festival. Sydney Film Festival and a dozen or so others around the globe. It picked up a couple of awards, Best Screenplay, and won the Critics' Prize from the International Federation of Film Critics at the 2008 British Film Institute London Film Festival. Great! And you've never heard of it, right? And you've never seen it on DVD, right? This copy is an Australian edition, but I had to buy it, mail order, second hand from the UK. Now how's that for falling between the cracks, I ask you? Three Blind Mice, it really deserved better. Newton and his cast really do deliver a rawness, honesty and freshness in spirit that may not always work, but I have to admire its bravery. End.